It's that time again. Last time, we looked at the top 10 strongest Gen 2 Pokemon, and this week, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Generation 3. Right away, let's make a few things clear for those new to these lists. First off, this list is approached from mostly a competitive point of view, and Pokemon from all generations up to this point are qualified to make the list as long as they're available in the Gen 3 games in any way. The exception to this are Pokemon that are banned from overused and put in the Uber tier. And as we go through these generations, that banned list is only going to get bigger as the roster of Pokemon increases. The obvious names like Mewtwo and Rayquaza are banned of course, as they'd make the list a little too obvious for virtually everyone anyway. But there's also the first non-legendary ban from our list in this series, Wobbuffet. Due to a variety of factors, such as the Shadow Tag ability, with the move Encore, and the potential of an endless battle between two Wobbuffet holding leftovers. Maybe in another video, we'll get the chance to talk about how weird Gen 3 Wobbuffet is. In comparison to Generation 2, the meta for Generation 3 competitive is far more familiar in concept, as strategies are allowed to be more offensively based than the more tanky Generation 2. There's also the introduction of abilities, which was a huge game changer for many Pokemon. But there still is no physical special split when it comes to the damage category of attacks, which definitely still feels a little weird to go back to if you're used to more modern generations. But enough of discussing the meta details, let's get right into the top 10 you guys came to see. As usual, Mystic Reads, Mystic Umbreon Shorts. You guys know the drill. <laughs> Once again, deciding who would make the top 10 spot was very difficult, as there were like three other Pokemon I was heavily considering putting here. Ultimately, I decided the number 10 spot belongs to Claydol. This Pokemon makes its presence known as one of the best rapid spinners in Gen 3, sporting a solid moveset and a very good defensive typing. That ground psychic typing allows it to have nice stab psychic and earthquakes in its moveset. However, this Pokemon is more of a great utility in teammate with that rapid spin and unusual typing rather than an offensive powerhouse, as its base attack stats are only at 70. More of a Magic Johnson than a Kobe Bryant, if you get what I mean. The reason it's not higher is also due to its really poor HP. It's one of those Pokemon that has great defense and special defense, yet low bulk, meaning it can still be defeated by water types pretty easily. Pursuit users can also annoy Claydol since it's not uncommon to simply try to switch it out. However, Claydol can also make players think twice about how and when to deal with it because it does usually tend to run with Explosion as its fourth move. Overall, when it comes to the best of the best in Generation 3, I think Claydol is a name that's definitely worth mentioning in the discussion. At number 9, we have a Pokemon that I bet many probably imagined being a little higher on the list, Salamence. Intimidate, pretty good speed, incredible offensive stats, a choice band option, a powerful mixed attacking set option, Dragon Dance, it's got a lot going for it. Its main issue, at least in my opinion, is that once you know Salamence's sets and know which moves your opponent is likely to use, it's not too hard to counter, as many very popular Pokemon in the meta can counter it directly in some way. Even if you're able to predict its entire moveset, however, Salamence still requires intelligent and careful decision making due to its great power. If you make the wrong move or guess, you're going to pay dearly for it. Mixed Attacker Salamence is probably the most popular, and is the one I'd suggest using in Gen 3 for most of your teams should you want to use it, which usually contains Dragon Claw, Hidden Power Grass, Fire Blast, and Brick Break. Revenge kills from Ice types are always going to be a problem, however, but its flying typing does allow it to avoid several threats, including spikes that now stack. Oh, and Salamence gets even better in Gen 3, as in it's banned into the Uber tier in the next game, so don't expect to see it on a potential Gen 4 list. Our first legendary slash mythical on the list is at number 8, and that's Jirachi, who isn't actually banned from the overused tier in its introduction. 
This is yet another one I originally thought I'd end up putting a little higher as I was crafting this list. But Jirachi, while being easily good enough to make any Gen 3 top 10, is actually a little hard to quantify in terms of strength. One match, you're basically sweeping teams with it. But the next, it just gets swatted away unexpectedly before you could really do much. While still psychic typing is overall amazing, it's got one major defensive issue, and that's Earthquake. And boy oh boy, if you've seen enough of my videos, or really any video that discusses movesets, you know just how common Earthquake is at almost any level of play in almost every generation. And it's even more all over the place in Gen 3 competitive. However, other than that, it's a Pokemon with an incredible amount of options and an evenly spread 600 base stat total. We'll be here all day if we go over every set, but I've always liked the Wish and Calm Mind combo. With its even stat distribution and Serene Grace ability, many elemental attacks like Thunderbolt and Ice Punch become more appealing and can allow you to plow through much of your opponent's team. And of course, your stab option of Psychic will always be an excellent option to have. But ultimately, Jirachi is so diverse, you could spend hours just reading up on Generation 3 strategies and trying them out for yourself. It's an easy Pokemon to put on your team, and it was always going to be an easy choice to put in the top 10. Next up, we finally have a Pokemon that didn't actually debut with the Hoenn region, Blissey. After only making it a brief honorable mention in my Gen 2 video, now I finally get to really talk about this thing. We talked about how great Chansey was in Gen 1, and while Blissey was a decent follow-up to it in Gen 2, I personally think it's much better in Gen 3's metagame. It's a special wall that's so efficient at filling that role that it's not uncommon to see an uber play the deal with the special attackers up there. If you're a really old school Gen 3 competitive veteran, then you probably remember seeing Blissey with Calm Mind style sets. But today, top players are pretty hyper-focusing on its utility and whittling away the team and shrugging off special attackers. There are many options with its moveset, and one of the only problems with this strategy is the four move limit. Do I want Counter, Toxic, Thunder Wave? Do I want Wish on top of Soft Boiled? There's a lot you can do, and when you're just getting started, you'll wish you could just have it all, because Blissey can practically do it all. It of course has some of the most obvious checks being physical hitters, especially the ones that have any kind of durability. Players can also use anti-recovery strategies with Taunt and put a wrench in Blissey's strategy. But otherwise, when it comes to fulfilling the role it's intended to on your team, Blissey is truly unique and a staple threat that's given many players headaches. Here, we have a Pokemon returning from our previous list, Gengar. And not too much has changed regarding the approach and strategies you would want to use with it. It even still has a viable Parish Trap option from Gen 2, if that's something you're looking for. The introduction of abilities now also gives it the immunity to Earthquake with Levitate, which is pretty huge, considering it was such a common problem for it previously. It also gets to continue being a solid spin blocker with its ghost typing, and with its fantastic speed and special attack, on top of all this effortless utility, it's easy to see how it's still so great in Gen 3. It'd be even better if the physical attack split were in place like in Gen 4, where it could actually use special ghost type attacks. But unfortunately, ghost attacks are still all physical in Generation 3, and Gengar's physical attack stat is just bad. But giving it moves like Thunderbolt and one of the elemental punches still gives it excellent results, especially when paired with everything else that's great about Gengar. It's also an incredible Will-O-Wisp user, allowing it to really aggravate physical threats on the opponent's team. Because this is such a common strategy with Gengar, it's often checked by fire types since they're immune to the burn effect. But there aren't many viable fire types yet as of Generation 3. Pursuit users are predictably a pretty miserable experience for Gengar. Its most common and obvious issue is its fertility. I mean its fertility, or fragileness if you will. But as long as you're skilled enough to play your cards right, Gengar is able to continue the dominant and competitive with its new strengths and move options. Starting our top 5 is a fan favorite, 
For the first time in this series of strongest Pokemon lists, we have a starter, Swampert. The type combo of Water Ground was introduced here, and it put fear into the hearts of many of the game's top tier threats. Even Pokemon that I've placed above it in this list don't like to deal with Swampert. It's a phenomenal answer to the game's intense physical attackers that run amok in the overuse tier. While it's certainly not unstoppable by any means, it's in the top five for a reason. Some may think that Swampert shouldn't place higher than Gengar, Jirachi, and Blissey. And while I think that opinion is valid, I think its spot at number 5 is also valid. And I'm comfortable putting it here ahead of the Pokemon I've previously mentioned. Being able to threaten so many of the best physical threats is just too important. And the level of option it has for its movesets is seriously insane. Its 110 physical attack makes it stab Earthquake among the deadliest around. And while its 85 special attack isn't great, it's not too bad either. And it allows for the ice type coverage to be pretty decent should you go that route, as it's still enough to torture big time players like Salamence. However, it has one major weakness, a four times weakness to grass. And there is very little Swampert can do about that. You might notice how insanely common Hidden Power Grass is if you look at movesets in Gen 3. And that's because Swampert is just that damn good. If it weren't for the ability to use Hidden Power coverage, Swampert would force the meta of viable Pokemon in Overused to look very different, and it'd probably rank even higher too. Next is another returning Pokemon. Zapdos. And like before, its reason for being here is mostly the same as Gen 1 and 2. It's fast, and it has a high special attack along with decent enough bulk. It also gets to enjoy an immunity to Earthquake. Its most common playstyle is a pretty straightforward moveset. A little Thunderbolt here, a little Thunder Wave there, hidden power coverage, and then something like Toxic or Baton Pass or something. It has some other viable set options like Rest, or a set more focused on maximizing Baton Pass with Agility. And they're all good. But the basic bread and butter is the most common, because it's good at just being a legendary Thunderbird that hits stuff. Zapdos's checks are interesting, because they vary a lot depending on its moveset. Blissey shouldn't be a problem for Zapdos. But if it chooses to keep Drill Peck in its moveset, Blissey and several other Pokemon that are meant to check Zapdos suddenly become significantly less efficient at doing so. Paralysis is more of a universal weakness for Zapdos, since players love its speed so much. Overall, it's a Pokemon that can be strategized around pretty easily, but it doesn't have as many consistent hard checks as you might think, and is very good at what it does. Being our top three is one of the most iconic monsters introduced this generation, Metagross. You knew this was coming eventually. A physical, steel psychic terror that was designed with being one of the best in mind. This Pokemon is one of the reasons Steven Stone is one of the better champions in the series. The guy knew what he was cooking with this one. It's very likely that Metagross is the best choice band user in Generation 3, as its 135 base attack and moveset complement it greatly. That Stab Meteor Mash is no joke. It has access to the usual you would expect from a Pokemon like this. Earthquake, Rock Slide, Explosion, even Psychic if you choose to go with the more basic mixed attacker set, since its special attack still isn't too bad. It's just not Metagross's primary appeal. If you don't want to run Choice Band, you can simply go with the always reliable leftovers, and stick with its great diverse moveset, or even go with something a bit tankier and throw Protect in there. Metagross's most iconic check is of course Swampert. There are other Pokemon that can give it trouble, like Charizard and bulky friends like Suicune, but Metagross can do the least about Swampert. But even with that, it's still easy to see why Metagross is such a big time player. It's been considered top tier in Gen 3 since its release, and that's never going to change. As we enter the number 2 spot, you may begin to realize a trend here, because number 2 is Skarmory, yet another returning entry from our previous list. If you're familiar with competitive Pokemon at a casual level, you'll know that some Pokemon may stay at the top for quite a while. 
Zapdos is probably the best example of this so far, but Skarmory is also here again, and this time all the way up at number 2. Skarmory remains excellent for many of the same reasons as Generation 2, but now it's just the best spike setter in the game by far, a move it wasn't able to use in Gen 2. It's partially impressive that it manages to soar this high in the meta with only a 465 base stat total. Its counters are generally Pokemon that can strike with the fire or electric attack, as its base HP and special defense are still poor at the end of the day. But you're specifically going to bring out Skarmory to deal with physical threats. Skarmory is able to maximize its utility and defensive style of play with Whirlwind to control the opponent better, and Toxic is almost universal for many Skarmory users. Drill Peck is also a decent choice to try to annoy some of its main counters, which are rapid spinners like Starmie, Fortress, and of course Claydol. So despite obvious weaknesses, Skarmory always has options to make sure it can have potential answers to mess with some of those counters and get the most out of its toolkit. Now imagine if Skarmory actually had better abilities than Kenai. Now before we hit number 1, here are some honorable mentions. An even better belly drum user in Generation 3 that can totally throw a player off guard. One of the two best fire types. Enjoy Charizard now, because Stealth Rocks is coming. The introduction of abilities made it an incredible trapper, and it's got a very fast stab earthquake. Like Jirachi, it's not banned from the OU tier. It has amazing Leech Seed and Baton Pass sets, but the weakness to fire, ice, and flying attacks feels worse than usual in Gen 3. It just barely missed the top 10 along with the next mention. A super fast and super strong choice band user that has a lot of late game sweeps under its belt. It's not particularly great defensively though, and Intimidate is no fun for it. I mean, yeah, it's Starmie. Fast, strong, and another top tier rapid spinner. Two pretty iconic bulky water types in this gen. Their nuances make their strategies a little different, but they have some similar counters, especially Celebi. Suicune tends to be a little bit more reliable and competitive. Other honorable mentions include Magneton, Moltres, Flygon, Heracross, Snorlax, Gyarados, Jolteon, Porygon 2, Smeargle, Vaporeon, and Hariyama. And at number 1, it's Tyranitar. I know, what a shock. The ability Sandstream alone puts Tyranitar on a totally different level from where it was at Gen 2. It completely changes the landscape of the overused meta more than anything else the other Pokemon offer. Not only because of how good it is, but because it gets to be accompanied by such a powerful beast, as all of its stats are very good except for speed. It's a Pokemon with the 134 base physical attack with a stab pursuit option that you have to be wary of at all times. Hell, there's like 8 different sets you can run with Tyranitar that are all excellent at any level of play because it has so many options. Earthquake, Rock Slide, Focus Punch, Crunch, even its special attack is viable at base 95, so you can still bust out an Ice Beam or something and have it be pretty decent for coverage. When one of T-Tar's least interesting sets is a choice band option, that's when you know its offensive options and potential are just all over the place. And of course, I think Hidden Power Grass is a pretty good coverage option too, since Swampert can be a problem. And that'll basically take care of it ASAP, since your T-Tar is very likely to be faster than Swampert. That being said, T-Tar is not as overpowered in the OU game as Snorlax was in Gen 2's OU but it still towers above all at the number 1 spot. If you watch Gen 3 competitive, then you know the deal with how prominent its usage is and how consistent the results are. This is the true start of Tyranitar's Reign of Terror. Unfortunately, that does probably make this number 1 pick yet another predictable one for those familiar with this generation. But at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for you. And those are my picks for the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Generation 3. This was a little easier to figure out than Gen 2, as Gen 3 competitive is much more popular and is in more familiar territory for most fans in that regard, as the metagame is a bit more of a crowd pleaser than what came before it. But what do you think? Do you agree with this list? What does your top 10 look like? Were you surprised by any of the picks? 
How do you feel about Generation 3 competitive compared to the rest? Let me know down in the comments below. We're finally here in 2023, and I'm super excited for what this year has to offer us. There's potential DLC for Scarlet and Violet on the horizon, and who knows just what else Game Freak may have up their sleeves. It's going to be really exciting times coming up for a Pokemon fan. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. I've got a really fun series starting up there very soon, and of course, have a weekly edition of my Should You Use series focusing on Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Also, if you're into fan fictions and what ifs, check out Mystic Reads. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content on there, so come join me. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.